Hi there, my name is Dimitri and in this screencast we're going to take a look at Google Test which is a C++ unit testing framework from Google. So how to get started with Google Test? Well if you're using Visual Studio you can just right click the project and go into Manage Nugget Packages, go to Online Packages and then search for Google Test. Here it is, just press the install button and close and you're good to go. So let's add the principal Google test header which is gtest slash gtest.h. Alright now we need to alter the main function to actually start using Google test. So first of all we have to call init Google test with some arguments specifically appointed to argc as well as argv and now we return run all tests. Here we go. So this is all you need for uh, Google Tests to start running your tests. So for this little demo what we're going to do is we're going to set up a bank account and test some of its properties. So let's make a uh, struct called bank account like this and what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a balance as an int and I'm also going to generate a couple of constructors. So let's generate an empty constructor and by the way, notice the wavy underline. ReShopper is basically saying that the member balance is not initialized in this constructor. This is something that we're going to uh, check later on. Let's also make another constructor which actually does initialize the balance. There we go. Okay, so now that we have a bank account, we can already start testing it because it has a balance and we can verify, for example, that the starting balance of a bank account is zero. So how do we do it? Well, let's go in here and let's write a very simple test. So tests are written with capital test and then you can make grouping. So you can make a name for a group of tests, like for example, account test. And then you can specify the name for this particular test. So here we can say, for example, bank account starts empty. All right, so all we have to do in this test is set up our data. So in this case, uh, let's make a bank account. And then we need to verify that the account is empty. And we do this using expect equals. So expect equals, we expect zero to be the value of account dash greater than balance. Here we go we have a test and we can actually run this test. Oh, that should be a dot, obviously. All right, so now that we have our test, you'll notice that ReShopper puts a little test icon here on the left. You can click it to run your test. Alternatively, with the cursor on this line somewhere, you can just press Alt, Enter and choose Run. So as you can see, you have a list of all the tests hierarchically ordered here and uh, the program is getting compiled right now. And once it's done compiling, you will see the results up here. So our test failed because, well, we haven't provided a default value. You can click on it and see the expected value of zero on the actual value and you can double click it to actually navigate to the test itself. So let's go and fix the test. In order to do this, we'll navigate to bank account and we'll provide a default value for the balance. Now, if we jump back into tests, we can simply uh, run all the tests and wait for it to compile and run them. Excellent, so the test now passes. Let's uh, jump back into source code and add more functionality. So what I want to have is I want to have an ability to deposit some money into the bank account. But before we do that, there's something I wanted to explain with regards to setting up the test. You probably don't want to uh, be creating a bank account explicitly in each of those tests. And this is especially important if you have some more complicated logic for setting up and then cleaning up after the test is done. So to avoid doing this, we're going to set up a test fixture. So this test fixture is just going to be a struct. I'm going to call it bank account test and it's going to inherit from test like so. And what I'm going to do is have some setup uh, actions in the constructor of this test fixture and I'm also going to have some cleanup actions in the destructor. So in this case I'm going to use a bank account. I'm going to instantiate it using a raw pointer and destroy it in the destructor. Now normally I'd use a unique pointer but uh, this is good for the purposes of demonstration. So let's make a constructor and inside the constructor I'm just going to say that account equals new bank account. Uh, like so and let's make this a field and then in the destructor 
So in the destructor, what we're going to do is we're going to delete this account. There we go. Okay, so now that we've got this set up, we can start using this test fixture inside our test and we need to modify our test. So this test, for example, is going to have an underscore F in front now. And the actual uh, grouping has to refer to the test fixture that we're using. So in this case, bank account test. And we no longer need an account because we already get one from the test fixture itself. The only difference is this has to be a pointed reference. There we go. So this is our new test. Let's actually run this to see that it works. Yep, everything is good here. So getting back into the CPP, we can write our deposit test. So let's do another test underscore F. This is a bank account test. And we can just say can deposit uh, money. All right. So what we have to do here is we have to deposit some money onto the bank account and verify that the money did in fact reach the destination. So let's do this. Let's say account dash greater than deposit. Let's say a hundred like so. Deposit doesn't exist yet, but you can always press alt enter and just create the member function. Uh, pick the argument name in this case amount and also generate an inline implementation here as well. Okay. So we deposited some money and now what we want to do is we want to uh, verify that the actual balance 100 is in fact equal to account balance. There we go. So let's once again press Alt Enter and run this test. You'll notice that the test got appended here down below our previous one. All right, so the test failed and we can once again navigate to the definition and navigate to the deposit function and finally implement it. So balance plus equals amount. So we're done. Now we can go back and just run this particular test. And now it's successful. All right, let's go back to our code. Now we want to test the withdrawal method, which we haven't made yet. And to test this function, what we need to do is we need to provide a set of test data, depending on the scenarios, depending on whether you can, in fact, withdraw money or whether you don't have enough money to withdraw. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to write parameterized tests. So essentially, I'm going to have uh, a set of test data that I'm going to use to uh, verify that this all actually works. So the test data item that I'm going to use is going to be called account state. So let's make account state. There we go. So the account state will have initial balance. That's what we're going to assign when we start our test. Then we're going to have the withdrawal amount. That's how much we're going to try and withdraw. Uh, and then we're going to have the expected final balance and whether uh, we expect the operation to succeed or not. So this is our account state. And what we want to do is we want to create several instances of this and pass them to a test. But to do this, we need to make yet another test fixture. And this is going to be a slightly different test fixture because we want to keep reusing bank account test, which creates our uh, bank account. And by the way, let's just make this uh, virtual. Uh, here. Uh, but we also want to uh, actually initialize the balance based on the count state. So this is how you do it. Let's make another struct and we'll call this withdraw account test. And we're going to inherit from bank account test. But also we're going to inherit from with param interface, uh, which takes a template argument relating to uh, what we're going to feed as the test date, in this case, account state. Uh, so let's uh, provide this here. So this is our new test fixture class. The only difference, uh, the only thing that we want to do uh, similar to what we're doing up above is make a constructor and initialize the uh, actual starting balance of the account. So we can say account balance equals and then to get at this argument because it's going to be different on different instantiations of the actual test we use get param that's a special function for actually getting the account state that was provided and then we just use dot initial balance so we set the initial balance and that's pretty much it that's all that we need to do in this test fixture so now that we have this test fixture we 
can actually write a test and this test is going to be parameterized so instead of test underscore f it's going to be test underscore p I'm going to call this one uh, well actually uh, we we use withdraw account test so let's just uh, put that as the first argument and this one I'll just call this final balance although we're testing the boolean return function as well okay so how do we do it well first of all uh, we get uh, the parameters so auto as equals get param like so but then of course we have to actually try withdraw some money and we're going to have a boolean success or failure return flag whether we were able to withdraw money or not so auto success equals account withdraw and we try to withdraw as dot withdraw amount here we go. Now withdraw doesn't exist yet. So once again, alt enter, create a member function. Withdraw, uh, let's just call this amount. I'm going to generate uh, the inline implementation here and let's actually uh, not complete uh, the, uh, the end result yet because, well, we know it's a Boolean. So we'll return boo here. But apart from that, uh, we're going to uh, essentially watch this test fail. So what are our expectations? Well, we expect uh, first of all, the fi final balance to be equal to uh, as dot final balance. So in this case, account dash greater than balance, like so. And we also expect as dot success uh, to be equal to uh, whether or not we succeeded in this operation and we keep this value here as success okay so we have a set of uh, parameterized tests or almost you you see there is no reshopper test icon here and that's because the test actually happens in that place where you provide the data for the test to run so we have to have yet another clause in this case is going to be instantiate test case p so what we have to do here is we have to give it a prefix which we we'll then use uh, for uh, indicating a particular set of test data I'll just use default here uh, then we have to specify what the test is in this case it's withdraw account test and then we have to specify the test data and Google test can be really smart here for example if you have several sets of data it lets you do things like a Cartesian product so you can do kind of matrix based testing but in our case all we want is a simple list of these account state instances for us to test so in this case I'm going to use values so values is a function that is provided for us. And here I'm going to make a couple of account states. So for example, uh, let, uh, let's say uh, account state. Uh, let's say that I'm starting with $100. I want to withdraw 50. My expectation is I have $50 at the end of it all. And this operation will in fact succeed. Or let's have another uh, different uh, type of test here I have a hundred dollars but I try to withdraw 200 and I expect that this doesn't work I expect that I still have a hundred at the end of it all and that the operation should fail so these are my two test cases account state that succeeds and account state that fails so now that I'm done what I can do is press alt enter and I can run all of these cases and watch them fail You'll see that reshopper has added another item here and you can expand it. And once the test run is completed, it's populated by all the actual sets of data that were fed into the function. These 16 byte object outputs are given to us by Google test and they don't look very pretty. So that's something that reshopper will help us uh, deal with as well. So let's go and actually implement the withdrawal function let's uh, move here so what we're going to do is we're going to check whether there is enough amount uh, so if the amount is less than or equal to the balance then we can perform the withdrawal so we can say balance minus equals amount and return true otherwise we just fail and return false so as you may have seen uh, the output the 16 byte object here is because Google test doesn't know what to do with our account state so let's use reshop let's go into the generate menu and generate the stream output operator I'll just output everything as is and seeing how we've actually fixed the test we can go back into uh, unit test sessions and we can rerun these tests and now all the tests pass and in addition we get some nice output here with regards to the account state parameters that we used. 
So this is it. This is what I wanted to show with regards to Google test. Now it's a large testing framework. So go ahead, read the documentation on Google test and have fun using reshapa for actually running your tests. So that's it. Thanks for watching and best of luck.